Oh, hello, everybody. I have my friend here, Glenn Fricker from Spectre Sound Studios. Friend? Wow, that's pushing it. SMG means... Spectre Media Group. Media Group, but Spectre Sound Studios... Is the name of the channel. Okay, got it. Need to make that clear because that's where you can go find his content. I don't know how to sum your channel up in one word because you do a few different things that... Sure. You do reading mean comments about yourself, or they're like texts. Are they texts or Facebook messages? Or uh, there's a lot of, you know, we, we, do, the... we do a series called Stupid Musician Text, and it's basically text messages from, like, clients to engineers, and, uh, you know, just text messages that musicians give each other. And, you know, there's some forum posts, there's some, you know, some Facebook comments, and even, uh, you know, the occasional, um, you know, Craigslist ad we throw <laughs> in just, just for good measure. Just the, the amount of idiocy out there is just staggering. As you can see, I have this uh, instrument here. Yes. The Warwick, I don't know the model of this. This is like but, the John uh, Entwistle bass. Yeah. And John is, Entwistle uh, could tear it up. That guy was awesome. Yeah, he doesn't play it like me. I play bass like a guitar player. <laughs> And I feel like most bass players go like this. Is there a stigma between bass players and guitar players where it's like, oh, well, you just play guitar, bass like a guitar player? That happens. I mean, but some guys who play bass like a guitar can do it really well. Most can't. So what's up? So M when, most bass, yeah, there's a saying, you know, it's like most, a lot of people say most bass players are just failed guitar players. Whereas <laughs> I, I know from experience that most bass players are just failed at everything. What's the nicest thing you could say about a bass player? Depends on the bass player. You know, like somebody like Tony Franklin, I can watch and just be blown away. You know, the guy mm -hmm. plays fretless, he plays super compl complicated stuff. You know, he was in The Firm, he was in uh, Blue Murder, a whole bunch of bands and whatnot. The guy's just m insane at levels of skill. He's just a joy to watch and listen to. So you require your bass players to sound good. I require my bass players to A, know the song, and B, make it all the way through. What about guitar players? that don't know the song. Most guitar players. <laughs> because Stop I laughing, have, you asshole! <laughs> I have something to tell you, Glenn. Okay, sure. There are, there are more guitar players that don't know stuff because I was one of them, and okay. I went to school with a lot of them. Okay. And they didn't know the songs, but guess what they get to do? What? Hide. Yeah, how? Okay. I, I'm, there I'm are these things speaking called them. volume knobs. <laughs> and what guitar players can do is get really good at pretending to play. No, I've never it's seen It's actually this. a new skill uh, that is developed in higher education. I, I went to Berklee College of Music, so oh, I excellent. can attest to this. I just want to shout out to all the kids at Berklee. I know a bunch of you guys watch this, so thanks very much. Yeah. Way, you guys are awesome. Uh, you are awesome, but some of you need to hear this. I'm sorry to give you a hard truth. Uh, <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> you're well, he says it with a grin. Sorry, you're never better dude. for not so knowing something. So what, what we do us we have a chart in front of us and we're playing in an ensemble of funk ensemble jazz whatever sure. it is and there's this thing you can do i know this is a bass but it applies to guitar oh an a's coming up really now bass players cannot do that yes yeah. so what do you say well, is there a bass equivalent to that? Since you well, seem the, to have a, a specific... Well, here, here's the thing in my experience anyway. It's usually the guitar players who wind up bush, booking the studio sessions. So they know their stuff. They come in, they know the stuff. And it's usually the bass player nobody ever hears at practice. Because huh. they, they're too cheap to buy a real amplifier. So they're either <laughs> you know plugging into the PA or just have this little piece of shit that they're plugged into. You know, got 12-year-old strings on the bass. And they just stand in the corner and hide, as you say. They do that, in a, like, in a, this is the thing in a so metal situation. So this is an affliction in bass as well. Oh, it's huge. Okay, okay. It's, because here's the thing in a metal band, the, the guitars take up so much bandwidth, nobody can hear the bass anyway. <laughs> do you do you track uh, when you, because you, you are a producer and, and sound engineer, uh, I need to learn from you, by the way. Sure. You're coming out with a course, is that right? Yes, I've, I've got um, I've got a few things coming up in the uh, Pro Mix Academy uh, with Warren Hewitt. Okay, so, so he's over at Produce Like a Pro, by the way. He's awesome. I need to uh, to educate myself on that. Um, I think the the hardest thing to do as a producer and engineer is to be make everyone be accountable for your, for their parts, right? Oh, sure. So how do you call out a bass player 
if he's doing this? If, if oh, he or well, she, if they're like not doing their part, do you, as a producer, are you just straight to the point like you are yeah, with sure. videos? Oh yeah, yeah, you have to be. I mean like, you know, it's like you can either tell, look, either they know the song or they don't. I mean like if, if, they, if they know the song and there's some say, technique you get issues. The, you get on the, the mic and say, hey, uh, do you know the song? No, or no, no. Do you, how do you how do you well they're usually it? in the control room with me we're tracking oh, director okay, okay, or whatnot gotcha. and I'm sitting them there with them watching them play and looking at their technique and looking you know and it's like okay where the it's really easy to tell once the song makes a change okay they get through the four, first four, eight four or eight bars it's like the change is coming up you know the change is coming up and if they're on it okay you know it but it's like if they're like half a bar behind you like oh shit we're in trouble you know <laughs> and it's like as it continues to go yeah, off and it's shit. like it's pretty easy to tell when they have when they don't know the material. There's been, definitely been times when I've just stopped the session and say, "Okay, look, it's obvious you don't know what you're doing. Go home and practice. Stop wasting your time. Stop wasting the band's money. And most importantly, stop wasting my time. So I'm really, here to make music. Really, you love bass players, and you're yes. trying to help them. Yes, I want. <laughs> and heavy music bass is one of the most important things in the mix. If you don't have that solid foundation, the guitars don't sound heavy. So if you've got a if you've got a weak bass line, you've got a weak guitar sound. I see. So the bass it, supports the guitar. Huge. It's like it's metal. it's half the guitar sound. Yeah. And there there'll be situations where we'll, we'll like roll off like the super low end on the bass and the super top end and just have a mid range. We'll like make a second copy of that track and distort the hell out of that and kind of mix that up the middle and kind of flesh out some of the mid range on the guitars just to give make them that much thicker. Now if you've got a if you've got a great bass player, that can be awesome. All the things you just kind of slid in there, that's what makes me want to take whatever it is you're concocting in that course. So can you, for anybody who's interested in mixing, including myself, uh, where can we find, is there like a email sign-up list for people who are... Oh, you just go to uh, Pro Mix Academy. Uh, oh, go to, go, here's what we do. Go to uh, spectremedia.ca and check out Pro Mix Academy through there. There's a bunch of courses up there already. We've got uh, one with Cameron Webb mixing Motorhead. So there's some really great stuff about mixing bass on there, like Lemmy's bass tracks of all things, nice. which is freaking awesome. That's awesome. Uh, there's, some, uh, there's some Galacticon stuff up there. That was the guy who originally did um, Metalocalypse. Oh, and those guys. So there's some cool stuff there. There's um, there's some rock stuff. There's some punk stuff. There's some hip hop stuff. There's all kinds of stuff. And my co my first course is going to be up there about October the 24th, and that's uh, the song's going to be called Galactic Gypsies, and it's a very cool piece uh, with my friend Christian Vey. It's math rock. It's kind of a jazzy piece, which is really out out to left field for me, but whatever. I'll work with anybody. <laughs> and uh, it's Christian Vey Vey on guitar. And uh, who's also at, Ber at Berkeley right now? Hi, Christian. And um, it's got Tony Franklin on bass and uh, Matt Starr from Mr. Big on drums. And it's really avant garde from what, I'm, uh, especially compared to what I normally do. Seems solid. Uh, I will put links in the description for that stuff, and those links will be updated if you happen to be watching this after the course is released, so you can find it right away. Glenn? Thanks for hanging out with oh, me, thanks, man. Thanks for having me on the show, man. Real pleasure meeting you, by the way. Yeah. GitCon's been an absolute blast. You are no longer a, a man in a screen. <laughs> you are a man in person. Oh, so it was great, great to meet you. And thanks to Warwick for allowing me. Still better than 90% of the bass players I have come in to do that. <laughs> All right. Take Later. it easy, everybody.